Oh, you're doing. So you're a vegan bodybuilder. You're gaining muscle just like a meaty would. You're gaining that muscle. You're making your hemp shakes. Driving your hippie hemp mobile all over town. What do you do? With, why do you have a hairy hemp car? You think you've been doing something good for your health, but I gotta warn you, I've been doing some detective work. I've been sleuthing on the internet and I found some information that's slightly shocking. You may want to reconsider your hemp protein. So as I showed in my meat is not a complete protein video, methionine restriction seems to be beneficial in cancer, tumor tissue suppression, decreased rodent, mito, mighty rodents in your house, and restriction is feasible. So I've been doing some detective work and we know that plants are lower in methionine compared to animal products, or do we? Here's where things get tricky. Per calorie, plants are lower by far. Spinach, everything's 500 calories. Methionine, 1.2 grams. Lentils, 0.3 grams. Brown rice, 0.2. Mangoes, 0.1. Hemp seeds, 0.6. And if you want to compare that to animal products, beef, we're at 2.6. So we're like 75 times higher. So we can pretty safely conclude that per calorie, a vegan diet has way less methionine and that will be beneficial for cancer and just lifespan extension in general. So per calorie, vegan diet's the way to go. But what if we do it this way? Per grams of protein. So this is gonna come into play for you bodybuilders because no matter what, no matter what diet you're on, if you're a meat eater or you're a vegan and you're bodybuilding, you're trying to gain muscle, you're trying to hit a target protein amount. And a lot of people disagree on how much that's gonna be. There was a study, I do believe it was somewhere around 0.75 grams per pound of body weight. So 0.75 grams of protein per pound like you can't get better than that you're not going to build muscle beyond that so 1.3 to 1.8 per kilogram no point going beyond that or as high as how dare you you debunked me instantly you piece of shit i hate you science so when we look at foods under this microscope now 20 grams of protein from bananas has 0.1 grams of methionine so still very low 20 grams of beef protein we're at 0.6, so we're much higher. But it's not the same astronomical jump. Oysters, where are we at? 0.4, hmm, interesting. How does that compare to hemp seeds, you ask? 0.5 grams of methionine. Oh my god. So according to the research, if we're taking this serious, and methionine has to be restricted, and the higher you eat, the worse you get, the more cancer in your bum. If that's the case, if that's truly the case, we can't say, hey bodybuilders, go have hemp seeds. It's healthier than oyster protein. Cause it's not, it's not. I mean, it is in so many other ways, but look at that 0.5 grams for the chicken leg. Same as the hemp seeds. What are we doing with our life? Now, I'll be honest with you, there's not a lot of science showing how much is too much. Because I've asked some doctors, some scientific-minded people, I'm like, okay, so we know that too much methionine's bad, and that's one of the reasons the vegan diet's good. How much is too much? And nobody knows. It wasn't in Dr. Amon Ra's books, even though he mentioned it. He was like, yep, too much methionine in that meat. And it's like, nobody knows. There's nothing. Toxicity of methionine in humans. Let's see this one. So I'm just skimming over this thing, and I'm probably misinterpreting it, but they gave schizophrenics a loading dose of 0.1 grams of methionine per kilogram, and they seem to resultingly acute themselves in a plasma homocysteine kind of sexual position, and they were susceptible to cardiovascular heart disease. This resulted in permanent damage, resulted in death, 
and longer term studies show that normal resulting elevated supplements of B6 caused the plasma methionine levels to be observed. So I'm, I'm a scientist. You, you've come to the right place to interpret the studies here. But if we do a little calculation, 0.1 grams of methionine, for me, I'm about 63 kilograms. 6.3 grams of methionine. That seems like a lot. Let's see what my diet's like. This is what I'm eating today. I'm trying to simplify things. That elixir is just making me bloated and constipated and that's not fun. So I'm at 0.6 grams. I'm nowhere near cancer life. That doesn't make any sense. There's no way that number is accurate. I mean, I could eat 3,000 calories of salmon for a day and not even hit that. Oh, that's not true. Okay, it might be accurate. So going through what I ate yesterday, bunch of lentils, oh my god. I've never been more bloated than this day. If you want to be bloated, eat exactly what I ate this day, and you will find it. You will find it. So I'm at 1.1 grams the day before, 0.9. So I think I'm going to be pretty safe, always around that 1 gram mark. Yeah, 1.1. But you low carbers, what if you eat like this? 2,000 calories of salmon, and I'll give you some broccoli. Just to have some fiber in your life. There, how much methionine you getting now? 8.6 grams. So I think a ketogenic diet, paleo diet type of thing, low carb, animal based, unsustainable. Too much methionine. All you raw meat eaters, what if you eat just beef? Okay, now we're on the three ridge diet. We got your ground beef. Always good to ground it up in the factory. That way you get more bacteria to heal your parasites. You're, they don't even know that. Raw eggs are a good source of vagina chicken seven. And the whole raw milk. Milk is good if it's raw, you don't even know that. Okay, we're gonna have to replace the beef because it doesn't have the actual information. We replace it with a beef kidney. You just have to pee on it first to awaken it. You have to awaken it. So now, we're, oh no, oh what have we done, we're over the limit, we're over the limit and only 2,000 calories, 7.4 grams, what if I wanted more than that, I don't want to be a skinny school child, oh no, 2,500, that would support a man beast, 9.6 grams, oh no, I'm getting cancer, getting cancer so fast right now, but that's a good thing. Vegans don't even know that one. I just realized the raw milk didn't have any information either. Now we got whole milk, it's not raw. It's not ideal for you, but at least it has information here. So now our 2500 calorie, we're at 9.8 grams of cancer. Oh my goodness. How about a regular old ketogenic diet? You got salmon, broccoli, and coconut milk. 2000 calories, 6.4 grams, you're over the limit. You're over it by one that definitely causes cancer. Once you go over from 0.3 to 0.4, you die. And that's just 2,000 calories. So that's, in my opinion, that's one of the reasons why calorie restriction is so powerful, increasing lifespan, because you limit these things that age you, like methionine, and too much sugar can really age you. Too much insulin spiking going on. That's why I eat the one meal a day. You spike it once, and then you recover. That's the ideal. If you're eating multiple high carb meals a day, three potato meals and fruit meals, it's like it's too much of a roller coaster and you are aging yourself. What's his name? OK Raw. He just posted his blood test results. Yeah, here it is. Raw vegan for 21 years, not deficient in iron or protein. Full blood test results. Now, first of all, that title, you don't test a protein deficiency in the blood. I don't care what your blood say, I look at your muscles and I see that you are lacking them. For a really good price. <laughs> in your button now up shirt. How dare you. Your button up, where are they? See your arms are this big, from here to here. I see the folds in the shirt, there's no muscle there. There's no anything, it's just this part. So his, stop doing that from here 
to here is his muscle. So, in my opinion, yes, you are lacking protein. But the whole point of this video was that John has super high A1C levels. And this measures your blood sugar over time. Diabetics use this number and they want to get it as low as possible. And he was in the high range and he eats this fruit-based diet and he eats like three meals a day in these giant smoothies. And he does it the right way. He does it the best way. He's always eating his fruit with greens to apparently sh slow the sugar. But in my opinion, greens don't really slow the sugar that much. You're still getting, you're actually adding more sugar to your fruit. It's just, it will rise slower a little bit, but you're still getting as much sugar. So you eat three meals a day, fruit smoothies, fruit bowls, mono fruit meals, and then his fatty salad at night, too much fat in the blood, doesn't mix well with the carbs. I thumbed it down just because of that I'm not deficient in protein because my blood says so. I'm sorry, I'll take it back. So I think we went off on several tangents there. We, we got away from it. We got away from it. If you want to do your own research, because I don't know if the science is conclusive on this, and some people do say the glycine helps with the methionine. So in my opinion, if you are eating meat, you got to eat the whole animal. You have to have like the muscle meat, the organs, and you're making your bone broth. Like it's a complete thing. That's the whole food version of animal products. It's the whole animal. That's why crickets might be the best thing ever. What about crickets? Have we looked at crickets? Do they have crickets in chronometer? Just cricket flour. You know, you gotta have your cricket cakes. So those are good times. That's gonna be weird. So what if you have 1,500 calories worth of cricket flour in a day? Ah, you son of a bitch. You don't even have the information. How dare you? Just looking at this, the protein quality of the house cricket. 578 crude protein, but they were low in methionine and possibly low in arginine, the herpes protein. So that's, that's helpful. So you might be onto something with your insects, but... I wouldn't be making salmon or beef or milk or eggs a large part of your diet unless you want the cancer of the fallopian penile pathway then that's that's your choice so that's pretty much it i just wanted to warn you plant-based diet healthy whole foods and stuff i know i'm going a bit off the path with my supplement shake but for the most part i believe your diet should be dominated by whole foods but i just have this warning for you if you're trying to match the protein of a meat eater, especially the top end, like you're going for that one gram per pound. <laughs> Almost said, shut your mouth. So if you're trying to hit that one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and you're doing it as a vegan, you're still gonna be unhealthy as shit. Too much protein is too much protein, regardless. I just wanna reiterate here, even if you're eating a super high protein, whole foods, vegan diet, your diet's based on lentils and frickin' hemp seeds, you're getting 130 grams of protein a day, even then, your methionine's still gonna be pretty safe. We don't even know what the safe amount is, but pretty safe. My point is, just the bodybuilders, picture a 200 pound man who wants 200 grams of protein. You could eat beef and sweet potatoes, 200 grams of protein and you'd get yourself 5.3 grams of methionine and cysteine is the other dangerous one 2.2 grams but look at this you want 200 grams of plant protein lentils and hemp seeds yummy yummy 200 grams right there 3.5 grams still pretty high and cysteine is even higher it's even higher so in general nobody's going to eat this but bodybuilders are freaks and they want super high protein and you got to be careful when you're getting up into this crazy area 200 grams get a life do what you want if you want those gains super gains oh my god i eat like 80 grams of protein a day i don't even it's not a huge issue i've experimented with like 120 grams a day and there was no immediate effect so i don't know if it long term maybe i would have built more muscle but I'm in this for the longevity game, and that's why I do the calisthenics that keeps the joints healthy, 
You don't have to get too big. In fact, the leaner you are, the easier your movements become. Doing that one arm pull up is not easy if you're 200 pounds. So I think that's it. We're done here. Be careful with that protein no matter where it comes from. But if you're in general eating a fairly high protein diet of whole foods, you don't have anything to worry about, in my opinion. Beans, you'll get bloated before you get cancer. That's for sure. So we're done here. Thanks for watching the video. Thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you take kitten protein powder. You make sure it's from kittens. I just, I know they're the highest in growth hormone because they're so young and playful and they have fun factor 17, which is good. You don't really get that as a vegan. Why am I raising my short leg here? Don't worry about that one. I brought the fan outside today, yesterday. There's a good 20 degree difference. At night, I'm out here, it's comfortable. It's cool even. It's like I could put on a shirt and then I step in there and it's a sauna. It's a freaking sauna. So I had the fan blowing in cool air. I slept better. You don't care? Okay. Vegan yet shirts? I'll leave. Subscribe for more videos. I'll see you in the next one.